so we talked about two uh, different forms of propulsion, which are super exciting. So the chemical base, that's doing pretty well. And then the electric base is, um, are there types of propulsion that might sound like science fiction right now, but are actually within the reach of science in the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years that you kind of think about, or maybe even within the space of even just like, like even ion engines, is there like breakthroughs that might 10 X the thing, like really improve it? So, you know, the real game changer would be propellantless propulsion. And so every couple of years you see a new, now a startup or um, a researcher comes up with some contraption for producing thrust that didn't require, you know, we've been talking about conservation of momentum, mass times velocity out the back, um, mass so there's times usually velocity a mass. forward. Yes, That's what... exactly. And you have to, you know, carry that up with you or find it on an asteroid or harvest it from somewhere if you didn't bring it with you. So not having to do that would be, you know, one of the ultimate game changers. Um, and, and I, you know, unless there are new types of physics, um, I don't know how we do it, but it comes up often. So it's something I, I do think about. And, um, you know, the one, I think it's called the Casimir effect. Um, if you can, if you have two plates and, and the space between them is on the order of these, like the wavelength of these ephemeral vacuum particles that pop into and out of existence or something, um, I may be confusing multiple types of propellantless forces, but um, that that could be real and could be something that that we use eventually. What would um, be the power source? Yeah, the most recent engine like this that has was just debunked this year, I think in in March or something, was called the M Drive and. Um, supposedly you, you used a power source, so, you know, batteries or solar panels to generate microwaves into this resonant cavity and people claimed it produced thrust. So they, they went straight from this really loose concept to building a device and testing it. And they said, we've measured thrust and sure on their thrust balance, they saw thrust and different researchers built it and tested it and got the same measurements. And so it was looking actually pretty good. Um, no one could explain how it worked, but what they said was that um, this inside the cavity, um, the microwaves themselves didn't change, but the speed of light changed inside the cavity. So relative to that, um, you know, their wow. momentum was okay. conserved. Um, and I don't, you know, I whatever. Um, but finally, someone, I think at NASA, built the device, tested it, got the same thrust, then unhooked it flipped it backwards and turned it on, but got the same thrust in the same direction again. And so they're like, this is just an interaction with the test setup or, you know, some God. the chamber or something like that. Well so um, thwarted again, um, but, you know, it would it would be so wonderful for everybody if we could figure out how to do it, but I, I don't know. 